This is the shore on 88.4 and the waves keep crushing in. Today with Ara Noir. How are you? Uh, I think uh, we are uh, on about 8 out of 10. So pretty good, I think. That's very good. Is, is that your first festival in some Norway? Uh, no, it's uh, our third time here at Partizan, and uh, this year we've done we did Vakken uh, last weekend, and uh, what other festivals have we done? Yeah. Well, Live Evil in Berlin, <coughs> and yes, and uh, Ukraine, one in Ukraine, uh, Wonderland, Wonderland in Ukraine, fantastic, uh, fantastic. I'm being very sarcastic, it was not fantastic. And Why? Because of the promoter? Yes, because not of the right. promoter. <laughs> we hate him. What's his name? No, I'm sorry, I'm just public radio. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your last album called? Out to Die is our last album. And you're making... How do you define... I'm very new in the metal business, so are my listeners. How do you define you're making black metal, or...? I think we could just say that we play uh, black metal, perhaps, uh, as like a... But very old school and very thrash metal influenced, uh, with the influences from the 80s, you know, with the Celtic Frost. And so, did you get uh, into black metal um, through your peers or is it is it really that that I don't know that you grew up and then that you got really angry about the church uh, or you were just a musician and you thought the music was lovely I didn't have any other people around that were into the, this kind of music so I sort of discovered it through um, watching shows like Monsters of Rock on Sky Channel and uh, stuff like that in, in the 80s. And, uh, actually, I discovered Motorhead for the first time in, uh, on Swedish television in the very early 80s. They had these promotional videos for uh, Ace of Spades and, uh, and stuff like that. And Overkill, they had some, some sort of, I think it was Overkill that was the first Motorhead song I heard. And that struck such a chord with me that I uh, was sort of uh, longing for that kind of barbaric uh, rock and roll, uh, you know. So yeah, it's, just, it's, a, it's a life story, so I can't really... No, 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 no. So, uh, your influence for the, for, from for your latest record, what did influence you? Um, latest record I think uh, we were influenced uh, by ourselves probably most of all and uh, we were working on it together and uh, just uh, uh, trying to, to come up with uh, good songs and we did that over a period of a very long time so we always we were a very slow band so we release an album every five years or something like that so so it's uh, Norway. No, it's tough to be uh, so. Uh, no, it's not tough. It's the opposite of tough, actually. We like to have it very chilled out and uh, relaxing. So we just uh, make music when we feel like it, and uh, we take it from there. You know, sometimes it takes a very long time. Other times, it also takes a very long time. So it always takes a very long time. I was very. You're making, um, you're the singer? No. Actually, we're two singers in the band. Uh, and this is a very complicated uh, story. I could make a long story very short. These days, uh, there's only one singer live, but that's going to change probably. On the albums, we sing uh, Napoleon, just the vocals, and I do vocals. Well, I'm not. Uh, Rules are. 
Are you interested in in astrophysics? Uh, no, not really. No. <laughs> How do you entertain yourself when you're? Masturbation. Are you? Did you get? Did you get a blowjob while you're here? But the other band told me that they're on Tinder. About respect and stuff. Yeah. Mm. That makes me really sad if I hear that. If I hear that song or anything, but I uh, just get depressed and I have to leave uh, leave the hall. That's, that's it. Yes. Yeah. But we are interested in organic, old, uh, you know, interesting sounding music. Not perfect, but charming. So you, so you're not into. Um, so it's about you're not sad or something about like the new upcoming that there's no. I went last year to Sweden Rock and they were just um, real men, like all the men playing on stage. There was nobody under fifty years old. Yeah, yeah, that's normal for Sweden. I think there are younger bands. But but there's there's the, there is a new growing scene that you like. Yeah. I I think it's really unhealthy to just listen to metal naturally. Um, are you are you influenced by um, commercial or pop um, productions as well? The production or the no. Uh, is it that? We yeah. Listen, uh, we are very open minded. that 
this music is sort of commercial or uh, made to uh, specifically is tailored to uh, fill people's needs or anything like that if if it's if that's transparent it's uh, it's very boring very quickly but if it's just a, a spark and a will in the in the bottom of the music that's uh, makes it more interesting is that how many percent is that um the attitude or is that the, do you hear that in the production because it's o overheard how many yeah, like attitude is very uh, important but sometimes even the attitude doesn't shine through because the uh, production is uh, you know in the music world do you have this copy paste uh, all possibility I you guess. play, you play, you. Some stuff you play you one guess. part of the song per perfectly uh, and, you, and you copy it and paste it throughout the song just to have everything perfect you know? so I, we basically don't like perfection uh, perfection is very boring yeah i want to hear if the drummer beats hits the drums really hard i want to hear it i don't want to have the same uh, drum because that is the perfect uh, hit of the drum i don't want uh, the production to be i don't know per perfect it's very bad so very bad so it's very boring and interesting it's also the, very boring when when things are uh, exactly the same tempo all the time you know it has to be a little bit up and down when it is it's more got more soul and uh, feeling <clears throat> feeling you know? okay so you don't get basic so you don't get a producer in to to uh, to no we produce it ourselves yes that's what we do yeah definitely uh, but you strive for perfection but you know you in your Self that you don't uh, that you don't be per that That's you can't be perfect. We don't, we don't in our world, the perfect is uh, something else. It's not perfect sounding. It's not the same or every time. Uh, it's always different. But you can hear the humanity like shining through. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. You can hear everything. Yeah. And if there's a mistake, uh, that's also uh, charming. And musicians like. Um, Jay Z or Rihanna, they're into. Uh, they use now m metal yeah. nowadays. Um, do you find this is a person yeah. and a professional, yeah. uh, professional in the metal business? Do you find that difficult or? Do they use metal, Jay Z and Rihanna? Uh, they use uh, they black metal references. They yeah. they use. I think it's normal, even the weeds, the steel, or, uh, or we are in a place for other genres uh, without people knowing. So I don't really mind uh, if they do. Um, maybe it's, it depends what metal they are. Uh, uh, maybe. But if it's something good, then why not? And you know, there's many like big producers have been metal musicians before, and I mean, uh, who make songs for all these. Backstreet Boys are really modern, modern yeah, music. Modern. <laughs> <laughs> <It's very> modern. <laughs> <laughs> it's nineties. Yeah, new. Yeah, that's true. It's new music.
they commercialize or that they help make... Yeah, I don't know, yeah. They try to perfect uh, everything. Nice. This sells, so you should do this, or this, this thing sells. Everyone should sound the same. They should go to that studio to record because he makes everything, yeah. He makes the perfect sound. You know. It's very, yeah. Things get boring very uh, easily when the businessmen uh, enter the scene. Yeah, how important is it for you to make evil music? Not evil, but ugly sound. No, like you like just like sound like you sound. Like, yeah. It's an important sound, ugly and uh, maybe evil even, but, uh, Yeah, it's important to keep our sound as well. Sound the way we want to, not the way that is important. Studio Ansage.de. The waves keep crushing in. Here we go. This is the shore on 88.4 and the waves keep crushing in. ...particular goal in view and final causes are mere human figments, end quote. Death is natural. The murder of the other to eat what is unnecessary seems entirely unnatural. A social contract, a jurisprudence of anthropocentric hubris of the most unpalatable and vulgar kind. Cannibalism is, however, <coughs> ethically elegant in comparison. In the Differon, Leotard states, what is invoked in the phrase of freedom is not a power in the sense of an eventuality, but one in the sense of an ability to act. That is, an ability to be the first cause from the cosmological point of view. End quote. Cannibalism catalyzes a cosmic ethic. <coughs> All we are is human. All we have the right to destroy, to negotiate, to enslave, is ourselves. And we seem adept at doing it to each other, but it's time to say enough to imposing this protesta on the other species in favour of utilising our own limitless potential. It's time for organ donation to become food donation. A proviso. The celebration of the corpse and of death here is entirely mutual and consensual. The business, for that is what it is, of murder and death machines from the farm to the battlefield is in the realm of the social contract. Even the murderer belongs to headlines and psychopharmacology. I wish to celebrate the banal reality that everyone dies, the potential of the already corpse for desire found in, necroph in necrophilia, cannibalism and all other thanatorotics. The life of oneself that may bring more joy through its cessation, from euthanasia to auto thanatorotics to suicide without... No, 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 no. This is the shore on 88.4 and the waves keep crushing in.